You start with a house. You start with a house. And when you connect it to families that lived in this house, then the result is emotion. And when you add emotion, you get people to stay involved with you for a long time. And of course, you have need uh, some objectives, and these are our these are our objectives. You need authentic information, archives, museum, stories, even stories. People, even if people still tell stories that are lies, these lies can be georeferenced, can be fixed to a place and a certain date, and that means that you have original data. And of course, it has to be low budget because we don't have a lot of money. It must be open source because we don't have a lot of money. And it's based on participation because we don't have a lot of money. <laughs> and that means that you work from people to structures. So if you have a certain question, you want to add a certain part of the project, and there's a very good volunteer who reports himself and says, oh, <coughs> we want to do something like this, but not that, but not that. Then you say, okay, let's do that, because then you have a lot of activity from this volunteer. So we make from society a participation society. And that by using simple formats. You need formats, but they have to be simple because everybody has to use them. Volunteers have to use them. They are not historians. And here we see this original cadastral data from our city. And here we see an open office Cologne, Excel, Light, Sheet. This is our basic part of our basic data. Everybody can read, can write, and of course you have to be sure to guide them a little bit. As I told, open source programs like Quantum GIS, it's an open source geo referencing um, system information system and it works for all kinds of platforms. As I told it's a cadastral project. It starts with the city like this, our city, so that combined with the way and then we have that this is part of our nowadays city, but it was originally many villages and cities. This is it. This is also set up. And this is Gemeen and then we Black and white means they have been georeferenced and so they are interactive. You can add information to it. It will respond. But here, where the colors are, it can respond with a lot of data because already the cadastro, original cadastro from 1843 in our region has been added. That means it has colors, really colors. It gives names, it gives identity to a certain cadastral space, a space. And when you add, like here, the village of Stein to, to add it to our city, you see that you already have a part of the total environment. So we show more and more data of villages and cities. You see, Seattle is not a big city. It is now a big city, but it was a very small city. This was set up in 1843. And this is where you can find us. We are right in the middle. This is only four kilometers between Belgium and Germany. So if there ever is a European city, it's us. These cadastral information show all kinds of information, of course, but in any way, it shows information about the cadastre, about the buildings, about tax levels, but also about professions of people. That is the basis. When you have the basis, 1843 and now, you can travel through time from now to 1843, then you have uh, the possibility to enrich it with other archival data. And it can be anything from a newspaper, but then you should use, I think, the semantic web in due time, because it's difficult. 
But this is more easy. You can add, of course, a parchment. You can add a letter or uh, an account, something like that. And it can tell more than you think, because this little piece of paper tells something about a poet in Sitter who was a good friend of Victor Hugo. And that means that a stupid piece of paper, you can use it to tell a story about Victor Hugo. <coughs> of course you use drawings, photographs, only about Sitter there are about 200 to 300,000 photos. But you can also use relevant museum objects or archaeological findings. And then you connect it to the genealogical information to get this connection to the people who lived at this place. Who live on a place where below the level of the house can be a very important archaeological finding. In that house or in this soil has was the original part of where a famous museum object is found. It makes it part of your story. It can also be the part where someone has been murdered, of course. Happiness and sadness are close together. <laughs> together you can make all kinds of presentations, even thematical layers. Like here, we have in Setup 24 public gardens with stories, secret gardens. Because the stories are not known by people. In the meantime, they are. You can also have a poverty layer. I'm working on this myself now. Telling the story of poor people in the city instead of the story of the rich people. But you can also tell the story of a bookshop. This bookshop was 100 years old and we had a pilot project to see if he could tell the history of this bookshop in the last 100 years. And it was possible. And then you visualize the city in 3D. Because what we want to do, of course, is go through this city and tell the history of the city by walking through it and telling history to people. And young people want pictures. And they want the most pictures that can move so you go to, to make these pictures, but they are still attached to the basis information, the cadastral information 8043, and now these 3D objects must be attached to the same basis. Okay, now we go to a cadastral parcel. You click on the parcel and you get these unique identifiers. The object ideas, the IDs which are attached, attached to each other linked to each other and they tell together they tell a story about this place if you don't believe it you go to the document the scanned original document and together by the way this is 2011 that we made this two years before the Pennstein machine this is 2011 and we had this pilot about the, the digital dossier of the city and it works. Now is this interesting for historians, but this is also interesting for our mayor, who's not very interested in history. I can tell that here because we are born live in the Netherlands and there's a Bulgari, he won't hear it. Yes, even our mayor can be interested, but not because of its of historical importation of importance, because it saves money. Mayors are interested in money and at least saving money if possible. This is archaeological findings, or in fact, this is the, uh, the, the city with the water and the walls. And here we have one of the old city gates. It is long gone. But it still, of course, is present in the soil, below surface. And we put it in the nowadays cadastral map. And if you want to make a new sewerage here, you must not make it here or there. So you have to listen to us to make the sewerage in the right place, which of course he didn't do. And then they cost, it cost them 65,000 euro archaeological excavation money. And that's when the mayor got interested. 
Okay, so integrating with archaeology these saves money, but also there's a lot of uh, data about monuments already available. I mean, now building the website, it's it's working a little bit now. Perhaps I can. I have only three and a half, four and a half minutes left. Perhaps I can show a little bit. This is the website, and this is uh, what you can see live every moment now from this cadastral information. Now we are going to connect this big data with nowadays big data. Building together with all kinds of time machines in Europe, a big European time machine. And that gives more integrality. Because, as you know, perhaps there is a European time machine being built now, waiting for a lot of European money. They are now waiting for 500 million euro. <laughs> yeah, okay, 200 is also nice. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> And I'll, well, I'll stay two minutes so I can show you a little bit of life. So this is the map. Um, I choose now the city of Sitter, where I already chose it. And then when I click on it, you see it, can, it will be built. Um, well, it already was built, so it has to be built again. And then I, I pick a name, Angerman. And now it shows the, all the, the parcels in the city in 1843 that were the property of this family Angerman. Now I choose, for instance, Abraham, Abraham Angerman from one of these families. He is the member. Everything indicated in blue is what is his property. And you can also do that with professions or profession groups or places where they live or toponym, toponymic uh, identifications also. It's, uh, it's not completely ready. We are still building on it. But it is, this is 30 terabyte of data. And from the 30 terabyte of data, which is uh, it's concise more now, um, this data comes flowing. So you need a lot of that capacity to, to see this. And there are still some children's sicknesses in the system, as we, uh, as we notice. But the start is there. Thank you very much.